Humans have been fighting each other since we developed fists and faces to punch. Societies come and go, but our monkey brains have never lost this obsession with aggression. Every year, millions of people are drawn to stadiums to roar in unison at the spectacle of hardened warriors in peak physical fitness testing their skills against the world's fiercest competition. Despite MMA being a fairly new sport, born out of a combination of hundreds of years of different fighting styles, its recent growth has been astronomical. My complete lack of knowledge or interest in this topic gave me the heaving, steamy dose of self-aggrandized courage I needed to make a shitty explainer video. In my infinite stupidity, I also decided to jump into the ring to gain my own little taste of this painful, unfamiliar world. Let's take a look. One of the earliest known mixed combat sports was the art of pancreation, founded in ancient Greece in 648 BC. The techniques in pancreation bore some striking similarities to modern day MMA, except in pancreation you could maim, mutilate, and even murder your opponents. These were seriously brutal matches. In one instance, a fighter was locked in a chokehold and in order to get out of it, broke his opponent's toe. The pain was so bad that his opponent let go and submitted. But after the fight ended and the victor's hand was raised, his arm fell limp. The victor was dead. As time wore on, different styles of mixed combat cropped up around the world. These included the 19th century French savate and Batitsu in Britain, which was the first martial art that combined both European and Asian styles. However, perhaps the most well-known precursor to modern MMA is Vale Tudo, a Brazilian fighting style that originated in the 1920s. It began in the circuses that travelled around Brazil and there were no holds barred competitions, meaning that essentially anything goes. It's pretty hard to pinpoint where it really started. You know, it goes way back to the Gracie days and the Japanese with their judo the old school catch wrestling and boxing, the tent boxing days. So to me, what I knew was Bruce Lee. He used to say, use what's useful, discard what's not. He used to mix Kung Fu, boxing, wrestling. So to a lot of people, the first mixed martial arts thing was the UFC. You know, that's when it really gave its appeal to the masses. And um, they got to see what it was when style actually did versus another style and what would happen. I think it was, like people are always evolving, martial arts was evolving and combat sport was evolving. Everyone always wants to see what a boxer could do against a wrestler. If a wrestler could take down a boxer, you know, things like that. Coming straight out of Vegas in 1993, the Ultimate Fighting Championship was instigated by a member of the Gracie family, who by this point had firmly established Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as one of the world's leading fighting styles and were keen to expand into a new market. Once again drawing the ire of authorities due to its violent nature, by the late 1990s 36 US states had made no holds barred fights illegal, crushing the organization's ability to develop a fan base. In response, the UFC introduced sweeping reforms in order to turn the competition from spectacle to sport. This approach was successful and the UFC grew steadily during the early 2000s and eventually found a mainstream audience. The competition was helped along by high-profile sponsorships and along with the creation and popularity of other competitions elsewhere in the world such as the One Championships in Singapore and ACB in Russia, mixed martial arts was catapulted onto a worldwide stage as one of the fastest growing sports on the planet. You know, danger of fighting MMA is everyone's worried about CTE now, like uh, brain concussion and stuff and injury and but you know, if you're not into the sport, if you're worried about that then go do something else. Like. If that's your concern, then you're in the wrong sport, you know. I've been 19 years, I've been competing now. Um, they say beware of an old man in a sport where young men usually die young, so... I'm still going really well. I fight for one championship now, which is the largest MMA promotion in Asia. I was the first Australian cage title holder, which was Warriors Realm. I won that in 2005. And then basically every three years, I fought for another belt. I think I won about five belts in total now. I'm 43 this year. <laughs> It's going to be and it's definitely getting harder. Like uh, I remember when I could just punch out 10 rounds easily and fine and now like it's me damaging myself when I bash people now. Like if I kick someone it's my leg that's sore or I've got a bulging disc in my neck and I've had a string of injuries but I just love the sport so much. MMA can have all styles, you know, it's whatever works for the individual but the predominant styles would be Muay Thai and boxing, uh, wrestling and ju judo and then Brazilian Jiu Jitsu on the grid is your ground. That's the martial arts can really mix it all together well, is gonna be the successful one. And you know, the one that can use his head the best. If using your fists to settle disputes is a basic human trait, I mustn't be very human at all. Learning all this information simply served to reinforce my lack of interest in pugilism. 
So with all this theoretical knowledge I had gained, I decided that the best way to use my head was as a punching bag for Sam Flint, a dear friend and professional scary man. Sam has an impressive reputation for being one of the best MMA fighters in Brisbane, so I figured if I was going to get peppered by anyone, it had better be someone that could kill anybody with one well-placed punch, but who hopefully wouldn't kill me because he knows I can't fight. Maybe he would hit me so hard, I'd cease acting like such a pussy. I hope that the following footage will give you an idea of how painful this sport is, even if you're wearing boxing gloves. And there you have it. Sam was clearly the physical winner, but I feel as though my spirit counted for something. If you've got a massive, unwieldy nose like me, I probably wouldn't recommend trying MMA, because getting punched in the face is super fucking painful.